It always seems that when my channel's on the ropes, a fairy at Google HQ tends to sprinkle fairy dust giving me another chance at survival. That or I danced with the devil to make such a clickable title and thumbnail even God himself gave me props. As good as it would sound for the script to say, I had no intentions to review this game, so here's a surprise that would be just as disingenuous as the people defending this game. Of course I was going to review zombie game number 325, if not because I claimed I'm an opinionated narcissist at the end of the original video, then it's 100% because that video got over 100k views. And I'm not one for missing opportunities. Sorry, I'm not one for missing opportunities that don't make me want to put a gun in my mouth. Sometimes. So I took some time to finish the campaign, then finish it again, then played it some more. And then I took some time off to play a Star Lord in a game I enjoyed because I realized that the red splatter all over my wall wouldn't match my paint if I had to play this game for another minute. Wow, Dr. Skipper, two life ending jokes in the span of 10 seconds? What can I say? I have to talk about Back for Blood, so please bear with me. Hey, have you heard of Raid Shadow Legends? Oh, you, you have? Well, for those who haven't, listen up then. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play mobile game that has an expansive world of content with amazing graphics and amazing looking champions, all from their own unique faction. And something that tends to be a checkmark factor of a cool fantasy world are dwarves. And that's one of the later factions added to Raid's lineup of over 600 characters. Dwarves have a rich, complex history within the world of Teleria, so you're gonna want to know more about them. But Skipper, how do I do that? Well, listen here then, silly Billy. You gotta use my links below and download Raid yourself to your mobile phone or PC. That link in the pinned comment in the description. Click it now. The third race made during the time of creation. They've largely kept themselves apart throughout history, interacting with other kingdoms only through trade emissaries and go-betweens. Their society is split across a rigid caste system of delvers, craftsmen, and the dwarven nobility and priesthood. And you really see it in the artwork. Not long ago, Sarath's demonic forces tried to invade the dwarven kingdom. The dwarves won at a great cost and their king gathered an army to march the surface and join the common cause with the forces of light against the darkness, ending over a thousand years of non-alignment. And you could play as all these cool characters. The faction has a lot of variety in design detail. There are evil looking ones, nobles, barmaids, sorcerers. It feels like a whole society. Look at this cool guy, like Tormund the Cold, with an HP of 20,145 and that big intimidating hammer. Also the man's iced out, or Seymour Gemcursed who is also iced out head to toe. And I know most of you are probably PvP fiends like me, so you absolutely must give a crack at the PvP arena battles. It's actually really fun to play and I enjoyed my time on it. And there's a ton happening in Raid this month. Special events every day, a bunch of awesome new champions, and the brand new Guardian Ring that gives you a load of new ways to use your champions. And at the start of December, Raid's releasing one of its biggest, most anticipated features ever. It looks insane. With all these new updates and an even bigger one right around the corner, now's the perfect time to get started in Raid. And if you wait any longer, you're gonna get left behind and you don't wanna be behind, come on, that's not cool. All you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll get an epic hero, Chinaru. You'll also get 200k silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, and one ancient shard so you could summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. All this treasure is waiting for you here, and these rewards will only be available for the next 30 days and only for new players. Once again, it's that easy, just click the link in the description and I'll see you in game. But for now, let's go back to talking about this trash can of a game. For those who are new and are waving a white flag that bleeds the word context, two months ago I made a video that sums down to, back for blood bad, Left 4 Dead good. And you should watch that video before watching this one, but let's be honest, does saying shit like that ever work? How many times has your mom told you to clean your room and you actually chose to do it? Exactly, I'm right. The two largest rebuttals I heard from that video were people stating that I am biased and full of nostalgia toward Left 4 Dead 2, and that both games are completely different and can't be compared to you dumb, stupid, poopy shoe bill. And my response to that is yes, I am absolutely nostalgic to that game. And to say they aren't similar is complete bullshit. Not only is Left 4 Dead 2 one of the most popular zombie games ever released, but also made the shoes that this dumpster fire of a game is attempting to fill. For it to then be revealed that the rats hiding in said dumpster helped make the original shoes, fucked up the new pairs they were trying to make, and are now trying again. Riding on the fact that they helped make the original shoes. I have no idea why the hell I'm using shoes as an analogy, but Turtle Rock Studios advertised that they helped make the original Left 4 Dead game so much that they might as well be wearing a neon sign while also having a piece of paper stuck to their back that reads, kick me. If it's not transparent enough to the millions of fans who watch the Dr. Skipper channel who have asked me what I think about this game now that it's released, I like it as much as I like the Los Angeles Clippers. Oh wait, most of your gamers, you're probably thinking I'm talking about clipping Twitch streams. No, you fucking dorks. But yes, I don't really like the LA Clippers. Sorry, Raymond. Back for Blood is actually best compared to a zombie. It's slow, dying, and incredibly uninspired. Look, if you spent 60 bucks on this game and keep trying to find coping mechanisms to defend your silly purchase, I understand where you're coming from. I too have made some silly decisions, but at least I could admit my faults. Luca Dantra. I was actually quite surprised when playing Back for Blood because instead of fixing every major criticism I had with its beta, they instead chose to double down and hand me a fat fuck you middle finger. While throwing in such a poor campaign you would have thought it was a COD game. Wait, people actually like COD campaigns now. Congrats Turtle Rock, you've hit a new low, but let's be honest, is anyone 
actually surprised. Black for Blood is a game where you follow eight boring characters that drop so many shitty quips and jokes you might as well thought it was a Deadpool movie. While you go through the same recycled mission sets as you look for a MacGuffin that could cure space aids. And by the time you beat the game, you realize that nothing has actually moved at all. But their own boring level designs, mediocre special infected, retarded AI, ibuprofen, and a baseball bat for the friend who's going to have to use on you by the end of your playthrough. That's if you haven't already been killed by boredom. Yes, I'm being cynical because there's so many people who have bitched that you can't compare these two, which makes no sense. Since they're pretty much the same game, but one had a seizure while copying the homework answers. And surprise, surprise, it wasn't the Valve game. Who would have known with a title like Back for Blood is Back for Disappointment? Turtle Rock Studio should be awarded, though, because it does take talent to charge headfirst into a wall not just once, but twice expecting the same results. I know my mean words have just burned the bridges of me ever getting a review copy of Evolve 2, but I should speak about the main reasons this game has me looking like the red guy from Inside Out. The accessibility in Back for Blood is horrendous. While I find the idea of a game developer slamming the door to those with no friends to rust in the rain funny, it also means that I would rust at times and I love myself, so that's a come on, Turtle Rock, no. It's insane that in the year 2021, I have to state that offline play should be a required feature for a video game, especially for a zombie game that takes pride in being the spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. There was once a time where I had to move houses and didn't have internet for four days, so I religiously played Borderlands 2 for the 900th time because I'm a sad idiot. And when I got bored, I would play Left 4 Dead 2 offline because it's fun to play alone. To be fair, you're probably never going to want to play this game alone due to its sucking ass, but requiring an internet connection for a $60 game to play its solo content isn't just stupid but downright retarded, given the game's genre. EA Battlefront 1 and 2 are games that are solely based around multiplayer, so they have more of an excuse to require an internet connection. But surprisingly, you could still play Battlefront 2 offline because while EA are money-hungry assholes, they at least have one voice of grace in the crossfire. If you buy a video game, you should be able to play said video game no matter the circumstance. This isn't a battle royale that relies solely on other players for its game mechanics, it's an objective-based zombie game, so why the hell are you isolating players who don't have an internet connection? The game also has no split-screen or pause menu, and while I understand split-screen co-op is a dying breed, Xbox is advertising this for their Game Pass model. Something that most people on Xbox consoles most likely have, and consoles are well known for their accessibility to split-screen co-op. Back in the old days of slur chucking and nade spam, my Xbox 360 hosted dozens of split screen co op matches in Left 4 Dead 2. And this was in 2009. And the pause menu now also seems like a dying breed being removed from video games constantly, which is extremely bizarre to me. And it seems little and insignificant, but like I keep saying, Left 4 Dead 2 solo mode had this. And it's from 2009, so it's fair to critique Leave Me Alone. Either Turtle Rock Studios are incompetent and can't see the basics of what made Left 4 Dead 2 a good video game, or they're just insanely lazy. I'm playing dumb because it's both. They're incompetent and lazy, there's no punchline, it's the truth this game fucking sucks. In my last Back for Blood video, I went in depth with my explanation of how Back for Blood lacks identity, and now at release I'm glad to announce that the game lacks even more identity. So instead of progressing forward and fixing their fuck-ups, Turtle Rock instead chose to be a rebellious teenager that can't stay at past 11. A huge reason for why Left 4 Dead 2 was so fun to play was its sound design. Gunshots, music, audio cues, and I'm gonna say music again because holy shit does music enhance that game. Back for Blood's sound design is the equivalent to an essay I'd write for my film course in college. You take a look at what someone did in the past and attempt to write the same thing in your own words. Slap it together and pray for the best and act surprised when the result is disappointing. The Horde and Safe House audio cues are the only sounds I could truly remember because of how frequently they happened. And I still don't like them. I would even say I hate them actually because of how generic they sound in comparison to Left 4 Dead 2's. Other than that though, everything is just as forgettable as this game. The guns in Left 4 Dead 2 sound impactful and unique. Shooting a shotgun makes me feel strong and hefty while shooting SMGs makes me feel quick and speedy. Every weapon noise in Back 4 Blood either blends in with the surrounding chaos due to poor audio mixing or is incredibly underwhelming. You see this AK? This is you. You see this AK? That's me. Every weapon in Left 4 Dead 2 you can tell apart by just the sound, but in Back 4 Blood you have shotgun, machine gun, pistol. And while they all don't literally share the exact same sound, you're gonna have to squint your ears pretty damn hard to notice the difference. And if you squint even harder, you might have a chance to hear the special infected. My bad, I mean the special written. No, fuck that, that sounds stupid. The special infected could literally yell, I'm here, please kill me, and that would have been more practical and unique than the sounds they actually make in game. Left 4 Dead 2's Common Infected and Special Infected have unique sounds that not only make them cool to hear 11 years later, but also helps gameplay and counterplay. If you hear a smoker in the area, you could prevent an attack creating a fair game loop. But Back 4 Blood's Special Infected are silent, making quiet and non-distinct noises, and their shitty character designs doesn't help this either. When you're incapacitated, the screen doesn't dim with a spotlight while music dawns on you to invoke this feeling of dread. Nothing happens, it's just silence. I love getting blindsided by Hunter to then scream for help while I'm getting ripped to shreds. It adds tension and spices up gameplay. And Turtle Rock's solution to this is letting you be able to ping enemies, which just ruins the element of surprise, killing all immersion since you can now see the tall boy coming from a mile away. Something subtle that you might not realize in Left 4 Dead 2 is its focus on immersion. 
immersion. When you shoot zombies, there's no hit marker, damage score, medals, or anything that could yank the player out of their immersive bubble. Back for Blood adding a hit marker not only shows how tone deaf the developers are to what made the first Left 4 Dead 2 so immersive, but it's also fucking pathetic. It shows how little they cared about when it came to immersion in this game, ruining its replay value. I made a comparison in my last video how Back 4 Blood's art style looks like Fortnite Save the World and Sunset Overdrive, and it still does. I'm sorry, Angry Joe, Notorious Suicide Squad Enjoyer, I heavily disagree with your take about this game being pretty. I find it fucking gross to look at. Fight me. You have objective improvements like the game's textures and reflections, but you have aesthetic choices that completely ruin any sense of immersion or tension. The lighting in this game include blue moonlight, boring gray fog, generic green suburb, and generic dark. And you will rotate through these four over and over, and it gets really old quickly. The environments never have tension or ambience, and all set designs are generic, not showing any sense of world building. Look at this barren, boring town versus this awesome shot in Left 4 Dead 2 where the city burns as ash falls. Also, I hate to keep bringing this up, but it genuinely baffles the shit out of me. Left 4 Dead 2 released in 2009. There is no excuse. You also have a bunch of gooey hive minds that get overused in nice gated communities that I would never hop the fence to access because I do no harm and break no laws. Also, a small detail I never noticed until replaying Left 4 Dead was how much I love the muzzle and flashlight combo. Not only does both Left 4 Dead games kick ass with their set design and closed off areas, shooting zombies in the dark while they scream for my gun to flash while blood goes everywhere is way more fun than shooting generic parasite monsters in the same boring overlit suburban environments. And side note, the game has no physics. For those who don't know that much about gaming, remember in Left 4 Dead where you could shoot microwaves in cups and they would go everywhere? That's game physics and Back 4 Blood doesn't have this. The tank was able to flip cars that could kill you, and the boss fights in this game get stuck on them. And the zombies, they suck. The zombies in this game aren't unpleasant to just look at, but they're also incredibly unpleasant to kill, which is one of the biggest faults you can make in a zombie game. Left 4 Dead's dismemberment might be my favorite thing about that game. I mentioned earlier that shotguns sound beefy, but just look at how much they shred in practice. Yes, Catherine, it's fun to rip off arms and legs while blowing out rib cages. Please go back to Pilates. And the special infected in Left 4 Dead were weird looking, but also realistic. Or Back 4 Blood special infected are boring biohazard abominations. Gross thing with a big pimple that does more damage when you shoot it. Gross thing with a big pimple that does more damage to it when you shoot it. And who would have known? Gross thing with a big pimple that does more damage when you shoot it. Fuck me, this is so generic. Also, the bosses are bullet sponges with no unique movement. Are you actually surprised though? Be honest. Discussion around the gameplay splits down the middle. You either love the new elements or you hate it. I hate it, shut up, this is my video. I was about to nosedive into why the game director is piss poor, but then I realized some of you have no idea what a game director is. Don't worry, little one, Skippy's got you now. The game director in Left 4 Dead 2 was a mechanic that would follow you and make decisions based on how you were performing. So if you were a kick-ass, gun-blazing, armory on wheels like me, you would start to notice the difficulty increasing after the third steamroll. And if you were a team that was a bunch of headless chickens, you would notice the game director going easy on you, spawning more meds, ammo, weapons, or anything that could get you back on your feet. The game director isn't perfect, and at times can be bullshit, but 9 out of 10 times you won't even realize it. The game director in Back 4 Blood is an unfair generic mess, relying on pure RNG that can make or break a playthrough. You could get four generic tall boys in a row, a bunch of zombies, no meta trauma stations, and that's just the tip of the shit cake. It doesn't feel bullshit difficult, if you know what I mean. You know games where you just die to something stupid, like, I don't know, multiplayer, you die to a random grenade in Call of Duty. This game doesn't have those kind of moments. Sorry I have to cut off this moron because this is the biggest load of bullshit I've heard today. Back 4 Blood's difficulty is lazy. The zombies do more damage and the enemies become bullet sponges while you gain more trauma, which is this annoying little red bar thingy that doesn't allow you to heal that area. A stupid mechanic, I'll admit. But making a game more insufferable shouldn't be praised as engaging and fun difficulty. The unreliable game director will give you some of the most overpowered and generic special infected to fight over and over again. It becomes unfair and not fun. The tall boy isn't fun to combat and is insanely tanky, but unlike the tank from Left 4 Dead 2, this fucker spawns every minute. Playing any difficulty above normal is just a game of luck. And having only two attempts to finish doesn't help either. Yes, two. In the beta, there are three, but now it's two. So you have to deal with bad friendly AI, in-game bullshit, and a long drawn out campaign chapter. And if you die twice, you have to fully restart. I have no fucking clue why this game mechanic exists, it's just alienating and obnoxious due to how much unfair bullshit you deal with in this game. And millions of fucking acts doesn't help this either. I have the same opinion about the card system as the original video. It ruins simplicity and is confusing for new players. I want to shoot zombies and not focus on meta builds. If people like that, cool. Let them have it, but make it optional for people who are normal. Same with the corruption cards. Also, the gunplay in Back 4 Blood is generic and stale. I'm not prejudiced towards ADS and Sprint, but the highlight of Left 4 Dead was this question. Both. 
In Left 4 Dead, you are constantly on the move while shooting, making the game feel fast-paced and fun while never sprinting. Where if you try to run and shoot in Back 4 Blood, you might as well be traversing through mud with shoes stuck in gum. The zombies are slow and robotic, but only catch up to you since you're in mobile while shooting, limiting your movement in comparison to Left 4 Dead. i rather have more mobility in a gunfight than a sprint mechanic that's used to increase the distance to then shoot anyway while being immovable. You would think with sprint and ADS, the game would have way more options for movement, but it doesn't. In Left 4 Dead 2, the shove mechanic created way more options for jukes and maneuvering, and this game is just shitty punching. Then you have the campaign. If there's one thing left for dead that I didn't enjoy is that there really wasn't a story going on. You're kind of just going from point A to point B. Sorry I have to cut off this idiot once again. Left 4 Dead didn't need a story. The basic goal of survival mixed with the interactions of the cast was enough for the game's lore. The exposition dumps from the generic cast are obnoxious and unnatural and the MacGuffin plot is lazy. Just in general, this cast is fucking obnoxious. Also, the campaign missions for the story are dreadful, not making it fun to play. The campaign levels of Back 4 Blood boils down to shoot these pods to progress, defend this area to progress, rescue these people to progress, rinse and repeat. It recycles content just as much as it recycles its set designs. And after the third time of shooting stupid ass pods, it becomes mind numbing. Also the multiplayer. <laughs> It sucks. That's that's all I have to say. It's really fucking bad and everybody knows this. It's unbalanced and just tacked on as a game mode to fill a quota. Overall, Back 4 Blood is a generic zombie game liking all the things that made Left 4 Dead 2 such a good game. So if you want to play a fun zombie game with friends, just play Left 4 Dead 2. It's cheaper and more fun. It also has a great modding community that allows you to add more content, play new maps, and have fun. Don't play this. This game fucking sucks. And if you are going to play it, get it on Game Pass. Don't pay 60. And for those who didn't get enough attention from mommy when they were little, you could go bitch in the comment section. Also watch the original video. Kill me.